All right. So one of the things that you have to understand is most of the times as people, one of the greatest desires of all men is to get to a place where they have interactions and understand the realm of the spirit. As people, we, we, we desire, we want to get connected. We want to get acquainted. We want to see and hear what is on the other side. And it is very important from what, how we started um, getting us to understand the spiritual realm on Sunday, that we get also to bring specifics and that as people, we get to understand um, our role as people and taking examples from events that has happened even during the word and bringing them to light so that someone can get understanding in a simple way. Some will say understanding <coughs> in a simple way. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So let's go to the book of Genesis. Let's go to the book of Genesis. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. So we are speaking tonight on a subject I have entitled Hindrances to God's Voice. We are speaking on a subject I have entitled Hindrances to God's Voice. Hindrances to God's Voice. It is important as people that we get to a place where we understand how God speaks to us so that even when it comes to our decisions, our lives, we can be accurate. Life is full of decisions as I have been communicating with us. Life is full of consistent decisions. And you need to get to a place where you are acquainted to God. You need to get to a place where you are in line with the Father so that your, your, you know, your life cannot be more than complicated complicated than it should be. When we read our Bibles in the book of Genesis, chapter number three, that will be our baseline scripture. Um, we'll start from verse number three. Praise God. We'll start from verse number three. All right. Uh, from uh, Genesis three from verse eight. And they heard the voice of, of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? Some would say, Where art thou? So the Lord called unto Adam and said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I want you to hold those three words as we are going to, to be getting into, into them. All right. So one of the things that we are learning from this scripture is the sequence in which God was talking or communicating to his first people or to, you know, the first people who was Adam and also Eve. The first thing you would understand, the Bible specifically says that it came to a place whereby the Lord called unto Adam. The Lord called unto Adam and said, where are you? Remember, when you read your Bible, the Bible tells us that uh, God was coming in verse number eight. The Bible, the Bible will tell us that um, God would come. The Lord God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The Lord would walk in the garden in the cool of the day. So when we study, when we study Genesis 3, all right, All right, verse number eight. Verse number eight reveals to us the aspect of the schedule. There is a schedule that God operates with. And at this particular time, the Bible says God came to Adam and Eve. It was the cool of the day. So there was a time in which Adam would get to a place where he would communicate to God or God would come and speak to him. There was a specific time at the cool of the day. This is the reason why you would realize that most of the times we speak of People getting to have a consistent prayer life, but a timed prayer life. It's not the first to hear the issue of uh, the issue of schedule. 
we are going to get in the Bible and we are going to see, all right, we are going to see who else had a schedule, all right? Let's go to the book of Daniel. All right, let's go to the book of Daniel. When you go to the book of Daniel, you would realize that when you read your Bible in Daniel chapter number six, Daniel chapter number six, go to Daniel chapter number six from verse 10. Daniel chapter number six from verse 10. Daniel chapter six from verse 10. Daniel chapter number six from verse number 10. All right. So Daniel six verse 10 shows us the aspect of what a schedule is like. Daniel chapter number six, verse 10. All right. What is the Bible saying? Look at Daniel 6, verse 10, if you are with me. All right. The Bible says, now when Daniel knelt, knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house uh, and his windows opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He knelt before the Lord three times a day and prayed and gave, gave God uh, gave God thanks as he did before. All right? So this is Daniel. When you speak about schedule, we are speaking about Daniel. Daniel chapter number six, verse 10. How was he praying? Three times a day. All right, so Daniel was praying three times a day. All right, three times a day. When you look at Jesus, all right, when you look at Jesus, Jesus also had a consistent prayer life, which was a timed prayer life. He had a consistent prayer life, which was a timed prayer life. All right. A consistent prayer life, which was a timed prayer life. When you read your Bible, um, in the book of Luke chapter number 6, verse 12. Luke chapter number 6, verse 12. If you have your Bible, I want you to go to Luke chapter number 6, verse 12. Let's see how our master Jesus was praying. Praise God. Luke chapter number 6, verse 12. Luke chapter number 6, verse 12. The Bible says, and it came to pass in those days that he went into the mountain to pray and continued praying all night to God as he usually does. All right. Luke chapter number six, verse 12. All of them are in, are in chapter number six. All right. So Jesus did all night prayers by himself. It was his lifestyle. So it was a consistent way of life. So when God also was coming to visit uh, Adam and Eve, the Bible says he came at the cool of the day. So it means at a particular time, Adam and Eve, Adam specifically, now understood a certain time in which God would visit them. So that is why you realize there are certain people that are consistent to praying maybe at the time of the midnight. And you are surprised. Why is this person waking up at midnight? Some at 3 a.m., some at 3 p.m., some at 12. They are, they, they, they are consistent in that time frame. It is not everyone who might understand why the consistency. But heaven also is time bound. Haven is time bound. So everything about haven also has a place where it is timed. So the moment God was coming in the cool of the day, the Bible declares that Adam and, Adam and Eve go to a place where they hid. And God now was asking a specific question. Why are you hiding? They heard his voice walking in the garden. Now, the voice of God walking in the garden is the presence of God. The voice of God walking in the garden is the presence of God. And I want to explain something about the presence of God, all right? I want to explain something about the presence of God. So, the voice was walking. Now, this was the presence of God, all right? This was the presence of God. The presence 
of God. All right. Now, you would understand that there is something that happens when we are to talk specifically about the presence of God. It is in the presence of God that the voice of God is found, that the voice of God is originated. All right. So they had the voice working. It means they had his presence. He had not yet communicated to them. I wanted to look specifically on this. He had not yet communicated to them, but they had the voice and they hid. So before he even said, where are you? Already they had heard his presence. One of the things that makes people to hear his presence is that we are his, we are his children. It is part of the DNA. All right? It is part of our DNA. When you look at a child, when a child is born, a child might, might not be seeing by the time they are born. A child might not be hearing by the time they are born. I believe the, the ability that a child is given when they are given, but the ability that they have that, that is strongly on them is the ability to what? To, 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 to eat <laughs> or to, you know, to suck milk. But at that particular time, a child cannot see. But do you know that a child in, in that space of a day a child who already know the, 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 the presence of their mother. Or if you are a mother, speak to me. A child will already know in a day the, the presence of their mother. There is a particular scent that connects them, a DNA that connects them. That is why Jesus says, my sheep knows my voice. So the moment someone gets to a place where they are born again into the kingdom of God, they develop a, a special ability to, to be able to hear from God. The, their senses are connected in as much as a child cannot speak and see, even see. It means there is no one who gets to be born already see. Meaning you must not uh, bring yourself to a place where you put yourself under pressure of why am I not seeing visions? Why am I not hearing the audible voice of God? You do not beat yourself around that question of why am I not uh, hearing the voice of God? Why am I not getting to a place where I, am, uh, I, I can see visions, I can get into trances? Even a child. But there is a connection that allows you to connect to the presence. To allows you to connect what? to the presence. But this is what now began to happen. We have agreed through scripture that the voice of God that was walking in the garden was the presence of God. So they heard the voice walking and the Bible says that they ran away and hid themselves. So these are most of the things that makes a lot of people to, 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 to get to a place where they are hindered from hearing God's voice. Am I communicating to somebody? And I'm going to explain uh, over that. Praise God. So God was walking and he said to them, Adam, where are you? And when you read your Bible in the book of Genesis chapter number three from verse number, number 10, Adam said, I heard, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid and hid myself. All right. I was afraid and hid myself because I was naked. Now look at this. This is Adam. All right, he heard the presence of the Lord walking, and this was his response. All right, this was his response. Adam, what did he do? He ran away, he hid himself. He hid himself. What else did he do? He he hid himself. Number two, he was afraid. He was afraid. All right. So these are the two specific things that we are going to be dealing with. He was afraid and he hid himself. Why would you hide yourself from the presence of God? Why would you hide yourself from your father? It means there was a transaction that had happened. There was a transaction that had happened that made Adam to get to a place where they hid himself. All right, let's go into the Bible. All right, 
Let's go into the Bible and see what is this reason. Let's go to um, Romans chapter number 8 from verse number 15. Romans 8 from verse 15. Romans 8 from verse 15. So we are, we are going to uh, make sure that we put it here. All right, so we'll connect this one to Romans 8 verse 15. Why are we connecting to Romans 8 verse 15? The Bible says, For you have not received the spirit of fear, but the spirit of adoption. You have not received the spirit of what? Of fear. Now, what had happened, what we are being shown, what had alienated and made Adam to run away, is that the reason why he ran away is that the, the spirit of God had departed. So why did he run? Number one, the spirit had left him. He was no longer connected or he was no longer in sync with the Spirit of God. He was no longer connected or he was no longer in sync with the Spirit of God. All right? He was no longer connected or he was no longer in sync with the Spirit of God. He was no longer connected. Why was he? He hid himself because he said that I am what? I am naked. Remember this. He said he was naked. So it means that he no longer had a covering. He no longer had a covering. Remember what the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you. So when the spirit of God left, the covering was removed. All right? The covering was removed. So Romans becomes the answer now. This becomes our answer. All right, the Holy Spirit. For we have not received the spirit of fear, but of power and might and of a sound mind. Look at your neighbor and said, We have not received the spirit of fear. We have not received the spirit of fear. All right. That's in Second Timothy. All right. Two Timothy. Two Timothy, chapter number one, verse number seven. Two Timothy chapter number one, verse number seven. All right. 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7. This becomes our theme, uh, this becomes our theme scriptures, all right? 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7. What does the Bible say in Timothy? The Bible says, we have not received the spirit of fear. So it means the moment the serpent spoke to them, there is another spirit that they adopted. Look at by say another spirit. What made him to begin to be afraid of God was that he had adopted another spirit. He had adopted another spirit. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. He had adopted another spirit. All right. So let, let's get back to, 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 to this factor. So what makes a, what hinders man from not hearing the voice of God accurately in their lives. Number one, information. Information. Look at number say information. Number one, it is information. Information. What is the information that you are operating under? All right? What is the information that you are operating under? The reasons of hindrance of voice of God, number one, is information. Wrong revelations. Wrong revelations. Wrong revelations makes people not to hear God's voice. Certain people, they've been told ways of how God operates. And you can never get to a place where you can apply real knowledge. You can never get to a place where you can get the right answers but applying knowledge that is irrelevant. 
You can never get to a place where you can have the right answers applying wrong knowledge. The serpent came, he spoke to them. When he spoke to them, they, when they listened to the revelation, when they gave the, the, their spirits and their souls access to a certain information, they got corrupted. They got corrupted. Remember what the Bible says. The entrance of thy word brings light and understanding to the simple. The entrance of thy word brings light and understanding to the simple. So the moment they got to a place where they accepted this revelation that they were given, they hindered themselves from enjoying that dimension that they were with, with God before. That is why you need to protect your spirit and your soul from certain informations. Praise God. Number two, we have heard the aspect of the spirit. The spirit had departed. The spirit had departed. The spirit had departed. What makes people to get to a place where, where, where they, 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 they lose track or they, they can no longer hear God's voice is that they get to a place where they are not led by the Spirit, all right? Where they are not led by the Spirit. Am I communicating to somebody? So when the Holy Spirit is no longer lead you, when the Holy Spirit is no longer leading you, when the Holy Spirit is no longer leading you, it's hard for you to hear His voice. Because it is the Holy Spirit that gives you access to his voice. Remember what the Bible says. The Bible declares that, the Bible declares that, um, what knows the heart of God except the Spirit of God? So without access of the Spirit of God, it is difficult for you to get to a place where you can communicate with God. It is difficult. Am I communicating to somebody? Number three, now, when this happens to a person, what happens is the moment the Holy Spirit is removed from a person, there is an equation that happens. There's an equation that happens. So 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verse 7 shows us the things that are required. All right? Shows us the things that are required for one to get to a place where they can enjoy, where they can enjoy benefits of being a child of God, and they can enjoy getting to a place where they can uh, eliminate some hindrances. All right, so we can let's call them um, requirements. Requirements. What are the requirements that are, that are needed? The first thing, second Timothy says, for the spirit of God is not given us the spirit of fear. All right? The spirit of fear. So when you get to a place where you no longer have the Holy Spirit, because it is the spirit of adoption that makes you to understand that you are, you are a child of God, what begins to happen is, number one, what happens is, when you are to hear God's voice, you have to get to a place where, by the Holy Spirit, you eliminate fear. You eliminate fear. This can also apply when it comes to the aspect of angels. Have you ever seen a lot of people, they talk about angels, but they are afraid of the atmosphere. And you can never get to a place where you can have access to a realm that you are afraid of. And you can only eliminate fear by getting to a place where you have more time with the Spirit of God, you have more time in the presence of God, because it is familiarity that removes fear. If right now... You, you, the reason why you cannot get into maybe someone's house because there is a dog in that house and that dog, they say that dog is vicious. It can bite people. The reason why you might have fear is because, number one, of the information you've been given over that dog. Number two, the aspect is you are not acquainted. You are not familiar to it. So, you, because you are not used, there is fear because you do not know what to expect. 
But when you get to a place where you have acquainted and you know the, 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 the atmosphere and what you're talking about, it is easy for you to enter that gate because there is that acquaintance. So in spending more time with the Holy Spirit, you familiarize with his voice. You familiarize with how he communicates. You familiarize with how he speaks. And when you get to that place, it is easy for you to now consistently hear the voice of God. All right. It is easy for you to consistently hear the voice of God. So, so fear is a fear is a spirit. It is a spirit. That is the first thing that devil brings uh, when he wants to make sure that you are eliminated. All right, from or you, what hinders you from getting to a place where you are there. The second thing that you need is love. Requirements, love. Love. Love is very important. Uh, love is very important. The Bible says, how can you say you, how can you say that you, how can you say that you know God, yet you do not have love? God communicates in the environment of love. God speaks because of love. When you know how much God loves you, your fear is eliminated. You need to understand the subject of the love of God. You need to know how much God loves you. He, he, hear me. God loves you beyond your, your, your beyond um, what you did yesterday, what you did the day before yesterday. The love of God does not count your deeds, does not count your actions. God loves you because he loves you. You have to understand that love is got to be in the circle. All right? The Bible says, uh, Apostle Paul says, if a man can prophesy, if a man can hear visions, if a man can even preach that fire comes out, if he does not have love, it is in vain. He's just a clanging bell. The moment you know no longer have love in you as a minister of the word or even as, as a person, you hinder yourself from having access to the voice of God because God operates in the realm of love. All right? It is love that makes you to become an intercessor. And remember also the burden of intercession is one of the first realms to enter into the prophetic. We are going to be teaching about that as we go. The, 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 the realm of intercession, the burden of intercession is one of the things that trigger a person to enter into the realm of intercession because for God to give you information about someone, you would have gone into a place where you have a heart to pray for them. So what makes a lot of people not even to hear, you cannot hear about what bothers me if you have no heart to pray for me over that. God can only give people access, uh, files to access and data of people's lives when you have the heart or of intercession. Praise God. Praise God. And the third thing that I'm going to speak about uh, for today, all right, the third thing that I'm going to speak about for today, before I give you the, the bonus one, it is the sound mind. A sound mind. A sound mind. A sound mind is very important because you realize that in as much as you can get to a place where you are prophetic, you can pray. If you don't have a sound mind, it is impossible for you to get to a place where you become accurate in, in as far as the things of God are concerned. You need a sound mind. You need a mind that is very sound. Am I communicating to example? So the devil will try by all means to get to a place um, to, to get to a place where he, where he affects you when it comes to the sound mind. He, you, you get frustrated, you get confused. And it, it is at that place that many people are alienated from hearing God's voice. Have you ever realized a lot of people when they get into prayer, many people pray, pray beyond what you know. But the biggest problem is people enter into prayer, but there are a lot of things that are in their mind. There is this stress. There is this burden. You are entering into prayer. You are stressing about your child, your husband. Your mind is not clear. Your mind is not sound. You are not stable. Even when you are in prayer, you are thinking about the rent, the mortgage. You are thinking about... So it's hard for you to get to a place where you can... Uh, you, you can connect yourself in an octave in which God can speak to you. Your spiritual antenna is not raised. You are not aligned to the frequency that God can communicate to you because you are stressing. 
That is where you see a lot of people getting to a place where if you can listen to what I spoke about on Sunday, where God is trying to speak to you, but it seems as if you can't get it. Not because he's not speaking, but because in as much as he's trying to communicate, your mind is not in a place where it is able to, 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 to hear or to capture his voice. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? So you need to get into an environment where you have a sound mind. All right? Look at him and say a sound mind. So as we explained from the beginning that uh, what, made, what made Adam to come to a place where he ran away, what made them to get to a place where they ran away is because um, the spirit had left him. The spirit of the Lord had left him, all right? The spirit of the Lord had left him. And because it had left him, he no longer had confidence. All right. The reason why you need you need this aspect, I want to show you something. When you enter into the presence of God, when you enter into the presence of God, one of the things that is needed, why the devil would make you to have fear, you have fear of seeing visions. You have fear, of, you, you just have fear. So fear ejects a person. It does not give you access. Let's go to Hebrews. All right. So I'll put a star on this one. All right, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 4, verse 16. Let's see what it says. Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 16. All right. Therefore, let us come, we, we, we are going to count the, 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 the important noted words that we are looking for in that scripture. All right. Let us, let us come boldly. Number one, boldly. All right. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. Number two, throne of grace. We'll start from here in our next session throne of grace, that you may obtain mercy. All right. So when you look at these three things, they bring you to a place where I believe as a believer, you are looking at it. The first thing is boldness. All right. The first thing is boldness. And the devil, like what I said, he, 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 he wants you to have fear. All right. So when you when you have fear, how do you go to the prince of the Lord? Because the Bible says when you enter that place, you need to be bold. The throne of grace, in as much as you have access as a believer, you are required to be bold. You are required to be bold. So the Bible says, and Adam got to a place where he said, I was afraid and I ran away from you. So already now he is already disqualified. And what makes people to get to a place where they, they, number one, they are afraid? It is sin. One would have committed sin. So sin alienates them from God. Number two, it is sin removes a person from grace. So what happens is what is now making what is now making Adam not to approach the, to, to, to God when God, when his presence comes, not to approach to, to, to God with boldness to the throne of grace, which is God. It is because he now has fear. So that he has fear, he feels he does not qualify to hear God. He feels he's, he, he, he does not pray enough. He's not spiritual enough. Hear me. You, hear me. People that were hearing God in the Bible, were they spiritual enough? When did you hear that Adam, uh, Adam fasted? When did you hear that Adam fasted? When did you hear he did the fasting you did the all night you, you did for, for you to hear God? He heard God because he was created. You are from the nature of God. You are created with the, the, the materials of God. So it is automatic that you can get to a place where you can hear God, operate in God, and you can communicate uh, in the aspect with God. I believe beyond any doubt that somebody has been blessed with today's session.